Tiny House Prepper. Hi everybody, this is Bill with Tiny House Prepper and this is part four of our shed rebuild. Uh, part one was the uh, demolition of the old shed, part two was the removing of the trees and the stumps, and part three was the uh, doing the, the foundation, the piers. Uh, in that video, my son-in-law Michael helped me and he's going to be helping me again in this video, which is the framing of the shed. I really appreciate his help. Um, if you have not seen any of the other videos, I'll put a link up here for the playlist for all the other videos so you can go watch those if you're interested. Um, I also, uh, <clears throat> I'm actually filming this introduction after I did the work <laughs> on to build the shed and Elizabeth said that I should have explained more what I was doing at the beginning. Um, when I put the sills, sill plates down, I bolt them down to the, uh, the piers. There's bolts sticking up that are embedded in the concrete and I'm just drilling holes in the sill plate. I put it down and then just bolt it down and that's what holds it down to the sill plate. So, okay, I guess let's get to it. Thanks. Attaching the sill plates. I'm ready to start the framing and I pulled out my nail gun. Now I haven't used this for a while because I haven't been doing construction full-time for quite a few years. I've been driving a truck but this is almost brand new. I think I only used it for three or four jobs and then it went into storage and it's been sitting there for a couple years. So I got out the compressor, plugged in the air. This thing is completely dead. It just doesn't work. I got brand new nails everything works here it's just dead so I'm gonna be doing the whole thing with hand nails this costs way too much to go buy another one just for this little project oh well So now it appears that I'm two joists short of a full deck. <laughs> Somehow when I calculated what I needed I misaccounted and I, w I ordered one short and then uh, the wood that they delivered to me one of them was so warped that I couldn't I can't use it. So I've done about all that I can do now until I can get two more two by tens to finish out the joists but that's okay because it's uh, about 6.30 in the evening and I'm done for the day anyway. I'll tell you what, man. I used to do this kind of work all the time, all day, every day. And then until my business died and I've been driving a truck for the past, I can't believe it, seven years now. 
just driving, sitting for 10 hours a day, just sitting and driving, you know. And now doing this work, I, again, I'm discovering that, man, I'm too old for this. <laughs> I tell you what, I've been working all day and I didn't get nearly as much done as I thought because I'm slower than I expect. And I'm so sore right now, my back is so tight I can hardly move. You know, I'm 59 years old going on 60 and not that that's old, but <clears throat> I'm glad that I'm not doing this heavy work all the time every day like I used to. That would be rough. But I still can get the work done and I'll still get this shed done. It's just a little slower than usual, slower than it used to be. All right, knocking off for the night and I'll get back to it again. Okay, so here it is uh, about a week and a half since I was working out here last. I finally ended up taking a couple of days off from work because I wasn't getting this done. So, as you can see, I, find I got the last two boards, the last two joists that were missing there and got them in place. Now, I'm probably going to want to insulate this at some time in the future. So I need to do the floor, the insulation in the floor now. Um, I really thought about this for a while of how to do this because if I use regular fiberglass insulation I can put it in from above before I put the plywood down but then there's nothing to hold it from underneath um, and if like critters get up in there they love to make nests in the insulation and I could just see they getting up in there and making all those nests and then the insulation falling down there's not enough room underneath to crawl underneath and put in put up you know plywood or Luan to hold it in place so it's going to be open underneath so I couldn't figure out what to do and then I came up with an idea I'm using this this two inch insulation board this is R10 and so I'm going to put this in here so I ended up actually putting these extra braces in here which will keep it from falling down and the critters aren't going to be able to you know they're not going to be able to nest in this so by putting this in here just like that before I put the plywood down that will give me R10 underneath and from the underside this will be exposed but it won't matter because it's not in the weather it's not in the sunlight so it's not going to denature or anything like that and we're not going to get critters crawling up underneath of there so i got to put those braces all the way through and put this stuff all the way through before i put the plywood down So here it is the next morning. Yesterday evening we finished the decking <clears throat> with the insulation underneath of it so we're all ready to go on starting on the walls today. As you can see we've got lumber stacked everywhere as is usually the case and also as you can see this is not just some standard little metal shed that you buy and stick on the, on the ground. This is a substantial building and in fact I'm going to make the walls nine feet tall instead of eight because that'll give me an extra foot inside for more shelving so you can't buy nine foot studs so I have to get ten footers and cut them down and so there's a lot of cutting and so for that I created this jig so that I can cut without measuring each board So I fastened down the chop saw over here so it won't move and then down at this end right at the right measurement from that blade I put a stop here so the 2x4 will hit up against there.
So I've got a 10 foot 2x4 here. I just lay it in there right up against the stop on the back. Everything's already pre measured. Then I just cut it. Simple as that, no measuring. I can cut through a whole lot of lumber this way very quickly. In fact, I will be for all of the walls. This isn't a shed. This is a cathedral. <laughs> Nine foot walls and two feet above the ground. It looks huge. It's gonna be cool though. End of another day. Got three walls up. I'm really excited. This is gonna be great.
Well, as you can see, we now have all the walls finished, so we're ready to start on the on the roof. And we'll do that by building roof trusses on the ground and then lift them up into place. So here's the truss. I've already fabricated it and laid it out. Now on the left side of the building there's going to be a three foot overhang. So this is the one wall that will sit right there and the other wall sits right here and there's the three foot overhang. So I put this extra little piece in here to give it extra support. And then uh, We use these plates to put it together. These nothing's nailed here, it's just laying there. And you put this on both sides. Put a few more nails than that in there, but you get the idea. Put another one down here. idea. We'll put these plates on the one side, turn it over, put them on the other side, and it'll be good and strong. And to be able, then we can just lift the trusses up on the roof. Once these are done, it, you can do, go very quickly putting up the trusses. It's kind of fun. Okay, we have the first truss finished, and I'm going to actually put it up to make sure it fits right before we manufacture all the other trusses. I would hate to, to make them all and then put them up there and find out I made them six inches too short or something. That wouldn't be good. So we're gonna put this first one up. There's a two by four right there that I nailed to the outside that goes up and that'll support the, tr the first truss and keep it from falling backwards off the end of the, of the building.
So we got it in there and it looks like a perfect fit. Of course that 2x4 over here on the left, that's just a temporary brace that's going to come out. But uh, over there it sits on the wall and over here you notice that extra little piece right there is sitting right on top of this wall to give it the support that it needs. And we've got a three foot overhang on the outside. So it looks like it's going to work. It's going to work, Michael. Good stuff. So now we'll start fabricating all of the other ones and throw them up. <laughs> it's like a little chimney on the end. So there's our little three foot overhang on the outside. That'll give me the ability to put firewood and bicycles and stuff like that, keep it out of the weather. We got the trusses up. I'm really liking the way it's looking. Next thing is the OSB, the roofing, you know, plywood roofing. But it's the end of the day and it's supposed to be like 80% chance of rain for the next three days. So I'm just uh, covering it over with the tarp to keep the rain out. And after the rain's gone, then I'll take the tarp off and keep continuing on with the decking for the roof. It's looking good. weather tight temporarily with that tarp on the roof I can lock it um, I'm working next weekend so the next time I'll be able to get to this will be two weeks from now so it should stand okay like that and uh, I'll go ahead and get this video out and uh, the next video will be the roof decking the shingles and the siding and hopefully that'll be it hopefully that'll be finished so I hope you're enjoying this series Please like the video, that helps me a lot, and don't forget to subscribe, and thanks a lot, we'll see you later. Hi everybody, this is Bill with, <laughs> tea with Jesus. <laughs> Blooper! <laughs> okay, I gotta stop laughing, okay.